on prayer Matthew chapter 6 Jesus himself taught um, what theologically we call the Lord's Prayer although uh, many people may have differing perspectives but the idea is not um, the idea is not um, whether or not we're validating whether it was the Lord's Prayer or so on and so forth but it was um, it's, it's amazing how Jesus mentored the disciples who would later become the apostles of the Lamb. He took out time to deal with them subject after subject. And in Matthew chapter 6, he comes to the issue of prayer. We'll start from verse 5 very quickly. And when thou prayest, so he expected them to pray, he expected them to be a people of prayer. Remember that he was showing them the systems that will make for their dominion, the systems that will make for kingdom come. And he was showing them the various dimensions of the kingdom that control results. And so he gets to a very important subject of prayer. If you read Luke's account, um, the synoptic version of Luke's account it doesn't just present him as introducing the topic he was rather responding to a question they asked him to teach them to pray so for them it was not an issue of prayerlessness it was the issue of praying without results they were not prayerless but they noticed that their prayer did not seem to command the power the glory that was required or um, allocated for the prayer ministry but every time jesus prayed they saw results and so they told him to show them how to pray right so let's go to verse five just pick one or two things and then we're done for this morning and when thou prayest thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are for they love to stand praying in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Six, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Seven, but when thou prayest, use not vain repetitions, it says, as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of. Boy, you ask him. Nine. Now he's, he's teaching them something very profound, and I'll just draw uh, a little from that, and that would be um, our talk for this morning. After this manner, he didn't say repeat these words. After this manner, I am showing you a protocol of prayer pattern your prayer after this after this manner therefore ye pray can we read together now one two go our father which art in heaven uh-huh hallowed be next verse please thy will be done in earth not on earth look well in earth as it is in heaven and then our daily bread 12 and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors 13 lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil then it ends by saying for thine is the kingdom the power the glory forever amen and so let's just look very briefly jesus is teaching here and He's showing us that we should pattern our prayer after a spiritual protocol if we desire to get results. Number one, our Father. Our Father. He says when you pray, don't pray to a counselor. Don't pray to an advisor. You're not even just praying to God. That every time you approach prayer, there is an understanding that you must have. That you are approaching one who is called Abba. Everybody say Abba. Abba. Father. Right? So if, if the, the revelation of the fatherhood of God is the foundation for effective prayer. 
Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11. Let's see what Jesus himself said about fathers. Please let's have it quickly if we can. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11. Read with me if you're a Christian, please. One to read. And if ye being evil. Now he's speaking to men. That man intrinsically is evil. And that if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children. Uh -huh, how much more shall your father that means that the, the apex of fatherhood is the ease to release. Are we together now? That one who is truly a father must be apt to give. So when you approach God as Abba, that means you are aware of his, his propensity to give. That God is not a withholder. It matters that your prayer is so constructed that when you approach God, you understand that this God is my Abba, Father, and that in praying, he will give to me. Because you have to know that he gives. Very, very important. Abba, Father. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8 and verse 15 that God has given us his spirit whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba Father. Do you know what Abba means? Look up please. Abba means source, source. When you go to God as Abba, you are saying, Lord, I'm not confused about my destiny helpers, my boss, my parents, they are channels. I come to you as my source. I'm not in confusion. I will not mix you in the multitude of helpers in my life to join the queue as though you are one of them. You are more than a helper. You are more than an advisor. You are the source. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. So you come to someone who says, I want to help you and I'll give you a job. He signs and tomorrow you have a job. You come to someone who gives you a contract. You come to, you come to someone who gives you an advice. And sometimes you can confuse who is really my source. And it is important that as you approach God, you approach him with an understanding that, Lord, it is true that you use men to bless me. It is true that you use systems and structures to bless me. But I'm not confused. I come to you, Abba. The source. Number two, the sustainer. The sustainer. It is not only the source, the sustainer. A man can receive nothing, the Bible says, except it be given to him. Sustainer. Number three, preserver. So it's not enough to just come to God and say, God bless me. As what? You are Abba. When you approach God, you approach him as touching his fatherhood. Are we blessed? It's very, very powerful. So th these are the kinds of, this is, this is Jesus teaching that there is something about your not knowing the fatherhood of God that interrupts the quality of your prayer life. You may pray, you may dissipate energy, but you are praying to one whose benevolence you are not sure of. You are praying to one who you are not even sure is as though someone has to assist God to reach you. So it affects you, but you go to God, the fountain of wisdom. You are Abba. It is within your power. We cry, Abba, Father. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. I cry, Abba, Father. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Abba, Father. Have you seen little children run to their fathers? You are standing there. Their father is the one to interview you for a job. So you are being disciplined. You are being careful. You don't greet anyhow. You stand and you are behaving. And the children just run. They are not even aware of their error. They just push through everybody and they go to hug their father. Because their father is not a director of a company. Their father is Abba. He is responsible for everything including their limitations. So while you are there standing on the queue, don't open the door until you are directed. You are, your eyes are fixed on the light, waiting for a green light to prompt you. And here comes a little boy. He pushes you, opens the door, jumps to the father, opens the fridge, and the father looks at him. 
his love restrains any action against it. See, you must approach God that way. Abba, Abba. It's good to pray right, but you must be conscious of his fatherhood. More than the accuracy of your communication. God is not an examiner waiting for you to hit every button right. He is a father who is already delighted that you are approaching him. When you pray, pray after this manner. Abba, Father. Are we blessed? Number two, very quickly. The second area is hallowed be thy name hallowed be thy name first samuel chapter 2 please and verse 30 there's a very powerful revelation there first samuel chapter 2 and verse 30 first samuel oh there it says wherefore the lord god of israel said please look up i said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father right okay read on i'm not sure okay should walk before me forever please look up but now the lord said be it far from me for them that honor me i will honor now listen to me to approach god boldly does not justify carelessness that in as much as he is Abba, do not forget that he is also the God of the universe. Because your awareness of his fatherhood can make you to now trivialize his majesty and might. Even though he is your father, he is still God. That means that in the midst of your excitement, there must be the spirit of reverence. Hallowed be thy name. So boldness is not a license for pride and dishonor. Approaching God requires honor and understanding that the God of the universe, he holds the world in his hands and he's chosen to be my father. So whilst I am grateful for the privilege of fellowship, I am also aware. This is a principle that not only works for God, it works for men. That regardless the privilege you have to a great man, never forget who you are talking to. Never forget who you are relating with. Sometimes we can be carried away by the simplicity and the expressions. But we must find a way of reminding ourselves that this man is a director. He's only chosen to eat lunch with me. I shouldn't forget. This man is a captain. This was the mistake of Vashti. Vashti forgot that her husband was also a king over 127 provinces. And so when he called on her, she was conscious of his husbandhood but forgot his royalty. And she paid for it with her place. Are we together now? It is important that as we approach God, we understand that he is Abba, but he is God. Are we together? hallowed be your name there must be a healthy communication of reverence as we deal with him i can speak and say god is touching you and his power touches you and it's as though you are using god you know he loves you so much he can act almost like a remote control but he is god he is god he is god hallowed be thy name are we blessed already number three very quickly thy kingdom come Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. Now notice the progression. He's teaching you to pattern your prayer after this. Number one, be aware of the fatherhood of God. As source, sustainer, defender, protector. Are we together? Number two, he says, approach him even though with an understanding of his fatherhood. You must approach him with honor and with reverence. Number three, according to the program of God. You must prioritize the things of the kingdom even above your need. Look at this. The very next prayer is your kingdom come. The word kingdom means the sphere of the governing influence of a king. I desire to see the influence of your power, your glory, your culture. Did you know that when his kingdom comes, it will not even allow you to get to a point where you will say, give us this day. Because in the kingdom coming, there is already a system that should not even allow you to have a need. 
So that the fact that you have to ask for food is a sign that something about his kingdom has not been enforced. The angels don't pray for food. The saints in heaven don't pray for their needs to be met because he says, fair where his kingdom has come. So he's saying the better prayer point is not give me school fees. The better prayer point is not give me this. Focus on allowing the sphere, my governing influence, to be domiciled within your life. And if that happens, you may not need to pray some other prayers again. Are we together? His kingdom come. His kingdom come. His kingdom come. For as long as the prodigal son was under the jurisdiction or within the jurisdiction of his father, he had no lack. Notice that lack started in his life when he carved out a niche for himself outside of the influence of his father. Provided he was within the sphere of the influence of the father, there was no lack. Are we together? Thy kingdom come. When his kingdom comes, his culture, his life, Everything that happens that negates the Christ is proof that his kingdom has not been established within that. And then he says, your kingdom come, thy will be done. Now, if, if you do not look at it in context, you would think he's saying your kingdom come and then thy will be done. The correct expression is your kingdom come by your will being done. The only way his kingdom comes is when his will the word will there is the root word logos, where you get the word, the intention of a man that seeks for expression. Your will be done. Everywhere his will is done, his kingdom comes. Everywhere his will is done. Heaven is heaven simply because the will of the father as the monarch of the universe finds expression unrestrained. And everywhere there is a violation of his will, it is judged immediately. That's what makes heaven heaven. So the Bible says, thy kingdom come and thy will, by thy will being done. I, it now tells you the location where the will should be done. In earth, not on earth, in earth. The first earth is you, not the ground. Because you are made out of that earth. So the kingdom come and his will be done in you as that sample of the earth. And then across the territory. Because if his will is done in your life, there are certain, your life will become an expression of heaven. The perfection, the beauty, the glory of heaven literally will find expression in your life. So he's teaching us to pray now. And he's saying, Abba Father, approach him as Father. Approach him with honor prioritize the reality of his government finding expression within your life and across your sphere are we together now yes thy will be done thy will be done in earth thy will be done in my life thy will be done in my life god only defends his will not just your desire he defends his will Let it be done in my life. Let it be done in my finances. And the will of God is not a mystery. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. It tells us Paul himself. Paul is praying and he's saying that for, I, I pray for you. I bow my knees and I pray for you that you be filled, number one, with the knowledge of his will. With the knowledge of his will. Paul is saying the will of God for the believer today is not a mystery. The will of God is captured all through scripture. His intent for you. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. Thoughts of peace or good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Hallelujah. So his will is not a mystery. Speaking through the apostle, beloved, I wish above all things that ye prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. The will of God was personified in Jesus the Christ. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he was the logos of God in action. So everything Jesus did was an expression of the intent of the Father. When he healed the sick, it was a revelation of the Father's desire to see that there be no sick people. When he lifted people, when he supplied bread, um, you know, five loaves, two fish, turned it to feed 5,000 people. It was proof that he was a God that desired the saints to walk in abundance. 
when he wept at the funeral, it was a proof of his compassion that he was not a father that would rejoice over the pain of his children. Jesus was a correction of our idea about God. Because until his manifestation, the prophets gave us different pictures about God. And in many instances, they were wrong themselves because they were learning God. And they did not have the investment of the spirit to the degree that would allow for perfect revelation. So they attributed many things, even things that were from Satan to God. Everything that was higher than the scope of science, the three-dimensional realm, there was a mix. Some of them mixed their work with God and divination. And so it, 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 it aberrated our understanding of God. And Jesus came as a reference, the standard. In other words, use my life to correct your perception about God. Are we together? The will of God personified in the Christ. So the logos of God given to us today by the Spirit is a compendium of the will of God. So that as we search scripture, we find God's intent. It is dangerous to depend on people to suggest to you what they think the will of God is. Because their suggestion will come from their pain, their limitation, the progression of their knowledge. But forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. And so I can find written here the will of God. And then by the agency of the spirit, I can understand his will for my life. When I understand the will of God for my life, my assignment is to posture myself in a way and manner that allows the word, the will of God to find expression. And everywhere that happens, the kingdom has come. Are we blessed? Yes, Thy will be done. Let me touch on two more. I may not finish. And then we'll pray. Amen. Are we blessed? So your priority should see his will. Should be to see his will being done. Now, the next, what's the next verse? Give us this day. This is where your need comes. Look at the protocol. Look at the order. Now, let me tell you how many people pray, especially Africans and Nigerians. This right there is the offer the finisher of our prayer. So we just come in with a very quick preamble. Lion of the tribe of Judah, Rose of Sharon. We don't even know what we're saying. We're just, it's, just, it's just an introduction to get things out of the way. And then we say, Lord, now we're praying. And our prayers are full of wise sayings, sympathetic talks, and all those kinds of things don't produce power. Oh, Lord, you are in heaven. Is it that you are not, you know... It's wonderful, but, but we need to learn how to pray. Jesus is mentoring us to pray. And he said, give us this day. Isn't it amazing that God is so caring that he's concerned about your daily bread, not weekly? The best that many governments can give you is monthly. And here he's ready to load you with benefits daily, daily, daily. A dimension of benevolence you must be aware of. That means if day to day you are being robbed of your supply, you have a right to know something is going on. You are faithful to ensure that there is an allocation. He proved this when he sent the bread of angels from heaven. You see, I hope you know that bread is already processed wheat. He processed it already, turned it into bread, and sent it to them. There are times that God will make your farm to produce well. But there are times he knows that you don't need crops. You need bread. He will convert the bread and give you directly. There are times God can give you ideas. And then you can grow the idea through three, four, five years to a great business. But there are times you need money directly. You don't need any idea anywhere. You need an intervention. The urgency will not allow you to process any idea and make mistakes and learn. You just need bread directly he can give both grace to your farm and bread to your hands give us this day it's a revelation give us this day lord i need to pay my rent thank god for the business idea i will look at it carefully when my rent is settled but for now i have two days giving me an idea from heaven is wonderful but it takes time to build give us this day somebody say give me this day not give me this week. Not give me this month. He understands the value and the power of time. 
all times don't allow all things to happen no no there are times that if you do not if you cannot capture certain things in a moment you may never come back again give me this day not this week give me this day that means god is caring enough to allow that your needs be met listen sometimes we think that the prayer that that cries that our needs be met is carnal and all of that in an attempt to prioritize the kingdom just like i taught you now in an attempt to show that we love god and we seek to see his kingdom come we are ashamed and afraid to talk about our needs no there is a provision in dealing with god where he responds to you too Thank God for the evangelism. Thank God for building churches. Thank God for all of the projects here. Thank God for the souls. But Lord, as I do these things, I remain focused. But I pray that my needs be met. I want to see the fees of my children paid. I want to also see that I rise and I grow. I want to see that I attend to the things that make for life and for godliness. It was scripture that says his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Not life alone, not godliness alone. Are we together? Give us this day our daily bread. Can I touch on one more? Thank you. Next verse. Now this here, I can spend the whole day dealing with this. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. The revelation here is a very complex revelation. The revelation is not God yet. The revelation is first you. That every man is a debtor. Listen. <laughs> forgive me my debt by bringing me into the awareness that the same reason why you need to forgive me is the same reason why I need to forgive others. My inability to help myself. Are we together now? This here is a revelation that number one, all men are humans. We're empowered, we're humans, we're empowered by the spirit, but that men are frail and they grow weary. Listen, the understanding that we are debtors alone will make you to never be surprised at the disappointments, the betrayal. You know, sometimes we act as though you did this. No, the understanding that all men are weak, all men are frail, will take away the heartbreak that comes from the disappointment. Jesus is teaching you here. He is saying, maintain a posture where you are not surprised at the behavior of people. That you can raise a child today and he can look at you tomorrow and act like you never invested in his life. He's saving you heart attack. He's saving you stress. He's keeping you healthy by giving you this revelation. Forgive our debt as we forgive. That means that captured in our understanding of prayer, we must know that we are dealing with a realm and a system where men are frail, just like we ourselves. So when we approach God and say, Lord, you can see this again. The Bible says he knows we are dust. The spirit of God was put in us, but in our frame, we are dust. The best of every man is still a man. We are only men helped by God. That means in dealing with God, perfection is not required. It is sincerity and brokenness. Perfection is exhausting and unnecessary. No man with, in the long run, sustains the ability to be flawless enough to meet the standard of God. Your humanity will be revealed in greed, in lust, in pride, in pain. Are we together? You come from a family where you were struggling growing up. Now you become a millionaire or a billionaire. That tendency to prove a point to someone who trivializes you one day will crop up. So he's teaching us here. This is not about forgiveness. This is about an understanding that we are frail. Are we together? Let me tell you this. The happiest and the most peaceful people on earth are those who know that all men are men. So while they tell you, Jesus, come and become king because you turn five loaves and two fish, 
to feed 5,000 people. Jesus is also aware that one day they will say crucify him. So the day they said it, he stood there. And he didn't look at them and say, Father, let fire come from heaven and consume them. Because he was aware that they were all men. The same Peter who looked at him and said, no, 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 no. I love you so much. You are, I will not even allow you to wash my feet. Was the same person who argued before a young lady, calling her woman to betray and deny Jesus. Now is the same Peter, three days later, who looks at Jesus and comes to him and says, ah, I'm a sinner. And Jesus said, that's not the issue, Peter. Let's go and eat. Simon by Jonah, lovest thou me more than this? He didn't even discuss the issue. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man. I'm just a, but you are the awesome God, mortal man. Listen, it's not a revelation to negate the fact that you've been exalted with Christ. It's a description of the tendency that comes by reason of wearing this body. That this body has tendencies that you better be aware of before it surprises you. And so in dealing with people, don't be surprised if they try to cheat you. In dealing with people, don't be surprised when a Christian brother tries to defraud you. It is a reality, it's a tendency that outside of the assistance of the spirit will happen over time. Forgive us our debts. So when you see great people keep quiet, even when they have the power to respond, it's not weakness. It's an understanding. There is superior knowledge. Are we together now? Yes. Listen, let me tell you, that's why I said we can dwell here all day because it's a very powerful thing. You must maintain an allowance for the humanity of men. This is the revelation Jesus is giving us that to be effective in prayer, you must approach God even whilst you trust that he continues to grant you access to his mercy. You must likewise. The Bible in Matthew chapter 18, oh dear, I have just about 10 minutes and we have to wrap up. Matthew 18, but let's look at it very quickly. Matthew chapter 18 from verse 21 is a long reading. We'll not go into all the reading. I'll just speak out a few things. Now, Peter came and was speaking to him about the subject of forgiveness. Are we together? He says, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till 70 times? You see that Peter was disturbed. I'm sure someone had offended Peter and he wanted a justification. He was about to take an action and he said, Lord, we need to discuss this issue of forgiveness. And then Jesus, when you read down to 35, um, Jesus now describes to him 70 times 70 and then he now brings a parable to illustrate. Are we together? He talks about a man who was owing a king. And then the king granted him pardon and he went to someone who was owing a far less amount and continued to oppress him. And eventually the story got to the king and he called him and made him to pay more. It's the attitude of people. Listen, let me tell you this. You must sustain compassion in dealing with people. Men are human. Men are frail. Men are limited. That is true for men of God. That is true for business people. That is true for your boss in the office. That is true for your director. That is true for the head of your department. That is true for the head of your unit. And that is true for you. Truthfully, it is true for you. It's amazing the audacity we have. Did you know that so many people on earth do not even have the spiritual and the moral credence? We live in a generation where everybody is correcting everybody. Everybody is correcting every man of God. Everybody is correcting every businessman. It's as though that's all that happens. Everybody wants to show who is wrong. Yes, we are all men. It's a revelation that we must find a way of convincing ourselves before we make a mess of ourselves before the world. Our humanity is not an embarrassment. It's an advantage. It brings glory to God. So when we, 
you see an ordinary man producing results that only God can produce, then Galatians 1.24 becomes a reality. And they glorified God in me. Are you understanding the prayer of Jesus now? Forgive us our debts. Forgive us our debts. Every time you do not give allowance for the humanity of men, you are sowing seeds whose harvest will catch up with you because in time, every one of us will have an opportunity to watch our humanity find expression and that includes Jesus. Watch this. Jesus is God, the logos of God. Now he's come in the flesh and Jesus is hungry and he stands before a fig tree. Remember, patience is the fruit of the spirit and remember Jesus is full of the spirit. And he stands before a tree, terribly hungry as a man. And there's no fig. What did he do? Ah, Jesus, where did you keep your patience? Dear Jesus, where did you keep? I mean, king of kings, the fruit of the spirit. Couldn't you at least give the tree a chance? No man eat of you again. Number two, he enters a temple and he sees people doing business. Where did he keep his compassion? Why didn't he politely report as a very good citizen of Rome? He took a whip and flogged every one of them. And after flogging them, he said, oh, sorry, it's just my temper. I said, no, 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 no. I'm still not apologetic. My house shall be called a house. Of... I mean, you love Jesus only because he's in heaven now. If you were on earth and you were... <laughs> Carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, us. I'm just a mortal, but you are the awesome God. Listen, by this, by this revelation alone, some of you need to go back and say, Daddy, I'm sorry. I know that you did your best. You were not educated, and yet you did your best to allow that at least I went to school. I know you were a drunkard. I've been running my mouth saying all kinds of things. I'm glad I came to church this morning. I understand you are human. Because you are about to have your child too. Your wife is already pregnant with twins. You don't know what it means to manage two children at a go. So before you close the door of compassion towards yourself, quickly express it towards others. See, let me tell you, when you become critical, the day your humanity shows up, the world will crucify you. When you sow seeds of compassion, you are not helping the people. You are helping yourself. Because a day will certainly come when you will need help. When Jesus stood by the woman at the well and was talking, he was also prophetically preparing for his days. At least there was a witness that stood with him at the cross. Everybody did not leave him. Be careful when you talk as though your humanity is already out of you. Listen, the treasure is in earthen vessels. Elijah may be temperous, but he's still a prophet. Moses may be a stammer and full of temper, but he's still a prophet. Abraham may have a problem with women, but he's still a friend of God. Hmm. You don't like what I'm sharing this morning? Listen, this is no justification for carelessness. It is the truth. We are all men. You love me today, Apostle Joshua Selman, and I love you too. You've not seen me when I'm hungry. You've not seen me when I'm tired. Are we together now? Yes. Have you seen God when he's angry? Arise, O oh God, and let your enemies <laughs> be scattered. Now, that's a part of God you don't want to see. He's not just a God of love, a wonderful God. He's also a God of vengeance. It's just that he has chosen that you will not see certain dimensions of him. He's redirected it to some other people. But he's still part of him. Who do you think built the lake of fire? 
the lake of fire was not an invention of Satan. It's part of the kingdom of God. Built by God's intelligence. Are we together? Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. So you take away the stress. I know you betrayed me, but I forgive. And God says, you are acting like me. You're acting like me. It's a revelation. So let's recap and then we pray. Number one, our father. Now it would not just be a creed that you chant, our father who art in heaven. No. It contains a protocol to touching the heart of God. Abba father, you're my source. You're my sustainer. My director is a channel. My business is a channel. It stopped producing because it became Abba. The ATM and the money in it was put by someone. So you stand and remove money from the ATM, but you are aware that the ATM is a channel. It's an extension of a bank. The real owner is not a machine standing there. No, the machine was put. So it, when money finishes, you are not afraid because the source is still coming back. So when someone says, okay, you are no longer working for me, you don't stand and say, so my life, am I going to die? No, 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 no. There are too many channels. The source. Are you getting the idea now? And then we approach God with reverence. With reverence. And understanding that he's Abba, but he is God. Number three, we prioritize his kingdom. That which brings honor and glory to the Father. That our lives are bent on seeing that the Christ be revealed and glorified. Give us our daily bread. I expect favor every day. Every day. Every day. Now this is the basis of, of the confessions that we make. I truly expect favor every day. If within 24 hours or 48 hours, nobody favors me, I will talk to God about it. What happened? There are 7.2 billion people on earth. What happened to the channels? Everybody cannot be disobedient. People have four or five or six multiple streams of income and it's enough to make them billionaires. Now, there are 7.2 billion people on earth. I should have gotten to a level where... I produce in season and out of season because as one person is sowing another person should be receiving a harvest and God so when God says he will daily load you with benefits is because he studied his system and found out that there is a, there is an endless supply there are times you wait for rainy season and dry season but he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water you no longer wait for a season to determine your fruitfulness you are planted permanently by the streams of water. Hallelujah. Please rise up, hold hands with someone, and let's pray. This is my final session with us here at this campus. And I hope that this understanding will add to our knowledge of God. That when we pray, it is important. Take your eyes this morning away from your job as your source, your business as your source. No, we're dealing with Abba here, the Lord of all creation. Psalm 24 says the earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof, the walls, the systems, and all they that dwell therein. All of our requests will only need Abba to respond to us and then it comes. He will use channels. He will use a job. He will use men. He will use businesses. He will use systems and structures. But never confuse systems as your source. All blessings come from God. He is the father of all things. Your lifting this year, your expansion will not come from a physical place. It will come through a business. 
it will come through all of the value adding systems and structures that you have your businesses etc but let me tell you all blessings come from god are we together two prayer points very quickly and i speak of our lives we're done for this morning and we prepare for the next service prayer point number one father grant me a revelation of your fatherhood you are abba I repent from making you join the queue in my life. You are not a stream of income. You are not a destiny helper. You are more than that. You are not a business idea. You are not just a supporter of my destiny. You are the foundation. I come to you. Someone is praying. Abba. Halibas Kalibra Hasede Balatushiada. Skande Bredigeshede Beletusiada Brahasada Bashia. Abba Father. Abba Father. Abba Father. Skalabandes Kabarushia Tahasedaba. Abba Father. If you are my source, then I agree that this year is my year of vision and expansion. If it is true that you are my source, then I agree that this year I will rise in a limitless dimension. The source of my anointing, the source of my strength, the source of my favor. You will use men, you will use systems, but you are Abba. hallelujah prayer point number two very very instructive i missed one step and i apologize i just remember the holy spirit just reminded me we don't have the time who art in heaven i wish i had the time to deal with that who art in heaven means i am not in your realm you will need faith to approach me who art in heaven is a revelation that you are operating from a duality of realms I reside in a dimension God does not live in eternity no in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth that means he was not in any of those spheres. you can't create what you are inside you have to be outside of it he only chose to make heaven his throne. The Bible tells us simply that he lives in a realm of light. Light. So he's saying, I am relating with you, although the Holy Spirit comes to be an extension of my presence in your atmosphere and in your life. My person, I'm domiciled, seated on a throne that is in heaven. And so you will need to understand the system that makes for interaction. There are times before, you know, phones became modern. There were times where you would send an MMS. And someone who is holding a phone, the, the phone, the device is holding may not have the system to convert what he's saying. And it will just appear as nonsense. So if you do not understand the technology of conversion, we may not be able to talk. Who art in heaven? It's an information. You need to know how God speaks. You need to know how you talk to him. For instance, God speaks to men like he's speaking to himself. God will not tell you, go and build a house. He'll say, make sure you thank me because the house is built. That's how God talks. So if you do not understand the speakings of God, he can look at you now and tell you about an assignment that you will start 10 years ago as if you started this evening. If you do not understand the system of the speakings of God, you will miss timings in your life. You will hear correct things, but their executions will either be too early or too late. Who art in heaven? But that's not the prayer point. The prayer point is forgive us this day. I gave you a revelation. Lord, the grace to forbear with men. 
the grace to be tolerant the grace to factor in the humanity of men as we deal with we are not much in ourselves it is the holy ghost that is the advantage he is the one who has translated us if there is anything god worthy in us it was brought about not by an act of our own effort it is the ministry of the holy spirit lift your voice and pray grace to forbear with my husband grace to forbear with my wife grace to forbear with my children we have obtained mercy and grace from god and we must sustain the fortitude to communicate the same the grace hallelujah hallelujah this is my final session permit me one minute to add more give me this day lord activate favor at another level in my life activate favor daily daily thank you for my monthly salary thank you for the quarterly yields that my business brings but i want to step into a realm of supplies by the spirit where it is daily this provision is captured in prayer is someone praying lift your voice and declare by the spirit hallelujah praise the lord let me just speak over your life and we're done in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I decree and declare. Please be sensitive. Just one minute I want to speak. Believe in what comes upon you. We are made by the investments of the Spirit that resides upon us. By the power of the highest, I stretch my hands over this auditorium and those who are watching. The grace to shift you to a new dimension in the spirit receive that grace now take that grace now in the name of Jesus I prophesy favor upon every one of us please listen to me in the name of Jesus beginning from today step into realms of favor I release upon you the grace the spirit of prayer and supplication the anointing to pray and command your heavens and command your territory receive that grace now in the name of Jesus everything that does not represent the Christ in your life I stand right now in the name of Jesus and I declare it departs from your life now By this time next year, in the name of Jesus, please believe, return back 10 times better. Financially, 10 times better. Spiritually, 10 times better. In the name of Jesus, I multiply your influence by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ.